Hi there, my name is Michaela. I'm the Gator Chapter of the American Indian and Science and Engineering Society here at UF. I'm the president. Um, we like to call ourselves Gator Aces. And I'm Lisa and I'm the secretary this year of Gator Aces. And we welcome you to the kitchen. We will be making Three Sisters Stew, a Native American inspired dish. The squash used in this video is a Bellevue butternut squash that was grown at the Field and Fork Farm and Gardens right here on UF's campus. We're going to start by baking the squash in the oven for 45 minutes. After you put it into the oven, you'll prepare the other ingredients. First up is the onion. We want this in quarter inch pieces. If your knife skills and cutting techniques aren't up to par, or you need to brush up on your skills, the Food and Fork Campus Food Program has a great tutorial on their YouTube page. Now it is time to mince the garlic cloves. Next, we're going to cut the peppers. The remainder of the vegetables will be added to the stew at the same time so you can store them in one big bowl if you would like. Remember, you only need half of each pepper, except for the chili pepper, so be sure to save the other half for another recipe later on, if you would like. The corn, beans, and squash are the key ingredients in the Three Sisters stew, and are the base of a traditional recipe, while the other veggies, like peppers, enhance the flavor. Thinly slice the peppers. Time for the hot chili pepper. Notice Michaela is wearing gloves in this video. I suggest you do the same, or be sure not to touch your face or eyes before thoroughly washing your hands. Make sure to get all of the seeds out and small dice the pepper so that there is not too much spice in each bite. We used pinto beans from a can, but typically these would be prepared fresh and the variety depends on the region you are located. Again, the variety depends on the land that you are on. In New York State, a native corn variety is called white corn. If you would like to learn more, please look up the white corn project. Now it is time to take the squash out of the oven and let it cool for 15 minutes before cutting it into bite-sized chunks. The squash should be cut into one inch chunks. Corns, beans, and squash are seen as the three sisters because they grow in the same mound in the garden. The corn provides a ladder for the bean vine to reach up towards the sun so it can provide nutrients to the other two plants. Together, the corn and beans give needed shade to the squash.
Now that the squash is prepared and all the ingredients have been prepped, it is time to put it all together. Heat your pan to about medium heat and add cooking oil. For this, we use corn oil. Now add the diced onions. Once the onion is softened, add the garlic and saute for two minutes. Now it is time to add the spices and give it a good stir. Now we can start to add in all of the ingredients from the previous steps, and the order doesn't really matter. The squash in the recipe, a Bellevue butternut squash, was cross-pollinated, also called a happy accident, with an indigenous heritage crop, the Seminole pumpkin. The seeds from this cross have been saved and adapted by local farmer Tommy Simmons, leading to a particularly delicious and well-adapted butternut squash. Tommy Simmons bred the Bellevue butternut squash, not the Seminole pumpkin. The Seminole pumpkin is a heritage variety that has been maintained and adapted over generations by the Seminole tribe in Florida, and we owe our gratitude to them. Now it is almost time to enjoy the stew. Just simmer on low, serve, and enjoy! Remember, any of the extra ingredients just enhance the flavor, not the authenticity. If you are interested to learn some of the Native American tribal stories about the Three Sisters, I encourage you to check out some online. Just as the stories are different between tribes, so are the varieties of corn, bean, and squash that are used. Also, there are many different recipes made with the Three Sisters throughout indigenous cultures. The seeds are also so important to many indigenous cultures because tribes took seeds with them when they were forced to leave their homes. Now we will make fry bread, which is a common food across indigenous cultures. The recipes vary across tribes, and it has been passed down through generations. Fry bread is a result of ingredients provided to tribes as rations when they were relocated by the government, such as Navajos during the Long Walk. To make the dough, it is just three common and inexpensive ingredients plus warm water. Now, Michaela will combine the dry ingredients.
Make sure that the water is as warm as you can get it out from the tap. Once the mixture starts to come together as a dough that is slightly sticky, you will cover the dough and let it sit for 30 minutes. Be sure to start heating your oil while you wait for the dough, as you want the temperature to be at least 350 degrees Fahrenheit. You may notice while you are making this fry bread that it is more difficult than it first appeared. Fry bread is both an art and a science. Each piece you make will get better, so likely this recipe makes about 8 pieces. If you want to see some talented indigenous chefs make fry bread, check out the documentary called More Than Fry Bread. Spread some flour out on a cutting board or otherwise flat surface. Mix up the dough one last time and section some off with the size of a golf ball or just a little bit bigger. When you put the dough on the flat surface, try to lightly dust it with flour to prevent it from sticking. With your hand, flatten the dough into a circle that is about half an inch thick and about six inches wide. If your dough rips, don't worry, just push it back together and keep on going. Now it is time to put your fry bread into the oil to cook. Gently transfer from the flat surface to the oil. Allow it to cook on the first side for two minutes then flip it over for about a minute longer or until it is golden brown. Then, place it on a paper towel to cool. You can add a variety of toppings, such as honey, butter, jam, or even make Indian tacos. I hope you have enjoyed this cooking demonstration. Feel free to check us out on Facebook at Gator Aces or to check out more of the Field and Fork YouTube videos. Thank you.